These are the three main types of passive transport processes in cells. Simple diffusion, channel-mediated facilitated diffusion, and carrier-mediated facilitated diffusion. None of them require chemical energy in the form of ATP to carry out their transport. They are all transporting chemicals down their concentration gradients, moving chemicals downhill from an area of higher concentration on one side of a cell membrane to an area of lower concentration on the other side of the membrane. Simple diffusion does not require any additional membrane proteins to carry out the transport. The substances are moving directly through the phospholipid bilayer of the membrane. However, in both channel-mediated and carrier-mediated facilitated diffusion, the chemicals are transported across the membrane with the help of a specific membrane protein. Simple diffusion is the most basic of all the passive transport processes, since there are no additional membrane proteins required. Chemical substances move directly through the phospholipid bilayer. Certain types of chemicals move the fastest through simple diffusion, such as nonpolar molecules, those with no overall net charge, hydrophobic chemicals, very small molecules like water, alcohols, and the respiratory gases, oxygen, and carbon dioxide, and fatty acids, steroids, and other fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K. Channel-mediated facilitated diffusion is a type of passive transport that is helped out or facilitated by transmembrane integral proteins called channel proteins. These proteins have a pore or tunnel that charged ions move through as they are transported into or out of a cell. Because of this, channel proteins are often referred to as ion channels. Facilitated diffusion occurs a bit more slowly than simple diffusion, but is extremely efficient. Keep in mind that the word slow is a relative term, because in one second, over one million ions can be transported through these proteins. This type of diffusion works well with ions and polar molecules, substances that can't move through the nonpolar regions of the lipid bilayer by themselves because of their charges. They need the help of the channel protein and the charged environment inside the tunnel. Ions usually have specialized channel proteins to help with their transport. Sodium, potassium, chloride, and calcium ions are all guided across the membrane, moving from high to low concentration through their dedicated channel proteins. Ion channel proteins can also be regulated through the opening and closing of a part of the protein called a gate. Channel proteins with gates are called gated channels. Here we see the gate in an open position, allowing sodium ions to be pumped into the cell from an area of high concentration outside the cell to an area of low concentration inside the cell but the gate can also swivel closed due to changes in the cell's chemical or electrical environment, blocking the movement of the ions. Carrier-mediated facilitated diffusion uses integral proteins called carrier or transporter proteins. These proteins help in the passive transport of larger molecules into or out of the cell, including sugars, such as glucose, fructose, and galactose, as well as vitamins. This type of diffusion works when a solute, such as glucose, binds to a specific receptor site on a carrier protein and initiates a shape change. As the protein shape shifts, it pushes the glucose molecule into the cell from an area of high to low concentration. Because there's a limited number of carrier proteins embedded within the membrane, there's an upper limit of transport that can occur called the transport maximum, 
When all of the carrier proteins are occupied with solute and engaged in transport, transport is occurring at its fastest rate. This is similar to a sponge that is completely saturated with water. It cannot absorb or hold any more water. When carrier proteins are saturated with solute at their transport maximum, they are working at 100% transport efficiency. One important example of carrier-mediated facilitated diffusion involves glucose. This process uses specific integral proteins called glucose transporters, or GluT proteins, that are specialized to bind to glucose molecules outside the cell. So when we digest food, our blood glucose levels rise, and we need to transport glucose into cells to make ATP using mitochondria. Glucose binds to a specific site on the GluT protein. A shape change is initiated, and the GluT protein delivers glucose into the cell. This is where the hormone insulin plays a big role in the body. Insulin works by inserting many copies of GluT proteins into cell membranes to accelerate glucose imports into body cells. So, through insulin's actions, the transport maximum of glucose is greatly increased, and more glucose can be imported into cells from the blood at a much faster rate. 